Hello, Drinks Tube. I'm Luca, and you know, I'm Italian. I'm crazy about wine. I'm crazy about artisan wine. And I'm here today to introduce you to how wine is made. I'm in Italy. Within Italy, I'm actually in the Veneto region, in the outskirts of Verona, in the western part, right in the heart of the Valpolicella Classico. I'm Italian, and I obviously consider the Italian wines the best. But wherever you are, wherever the wine comes from, let it be California, Australia, New Zealand, France, the winemaking doesn't change. And I'm going to guide you through every single step of the winemaking, from the grape growing in the vineyards all the way to the tasting. The amazing world of wine doesn't begin in the cellar, but it begins in the vineyard. It begins from a vine, and the most important thing to set the identity of a wine is the terroir where the vine is planted onto. Terroir, what a big word, but in reality terroir only means the soil on which a vine is planted. For example, in this case, the vineyard is very, very close to the seaside, as you can see, and before even tasting the wine from this vineyard, I will know already for a fact that the wine will have a very strong character, a very salty finish also. Because being so close to the seaside, it means that the terroir is very rich in sea life debris and fossils. Therefore, very fine, salty minerals will be absorbed by the roof and they will be delivered into the grapes, which inevitably will end up in the taste of the wine. Whatever the terroir, wherever the vineyards are, springtime kicks in and soon after the grapes are ready to be harvested. But how does the producer know when it's time to harvest? Basically, he will daily check the amount of sugar contained within the juice of the grapes because he has to make sure that that amount of sugar is right for the alcohol level of the wine that he wants to produce. Grapes then will be brought back to the cellar and they will have to go through the, one of the most crucial and critical stage of the winemaking, the de-stemming and the crushing of the grapes. And it all happens by using machines like this one, the Pigia di Raspatrice. And now Pierpaolo Antolini, one of the greatest Amarone producers, will introduce her of how this machine works. The machine, it is very simple. When arrive the grapes, we put inside here and thanks to this cylinder, the, the stem go out and the grapes go down. Here we have two small cylinders that crushing the grape. It is in rubber, so it is very, very, very soft, like the feet. And then the freshly crushed grapes get pumped into fermenting tanks like this, where the magic of the alcoholic fermentation happens. Thanks to the yeast, they transform the sugar in alcohol and gas, and that is alcoholic fermentation. The alcoholic fermentation will last between five to seven days. For the white, for color, we remove the skin uh, with it in a day. Yes, because the color is contained within a skin. The longer we leave the skin in maceration with the wine, the more deeper the color will be. As a matter of fact, for red wine, the maceration normally lasts from two weeks all the way to two months. For rosé, in the between. Alcoholic fermentation is finished, skins are removed, the wine now is ready for the refining stage. Which can be in stainless steel tank or in a wood barrel, like here. Wood is extremely important because through its pores, some small quantity of oxygen will get in contact with the wine, creating an oxidation. Some woods have a tighter pores, some woods have looser pores, therefore there will be a different kinds of oxidation and this will definitely change the taste of the wine. The vast majority of producers will use barrels made out of only one wood. But I use four types of wood. Oak, cherry, chestnut and mulberry. Four types of wood which will deliver four different styles of flavors, which Pierpaolo, as a very capable and talented orchestra maestro, will then, at the end of the aging process, will blend them together for a mega, complex, super fine, spectacular example of wine. So also, for aging barrels, size really do matter. This small is called barrique. The smaller, the faster the aging, simply because there is a greater surface area per volume of wine, therefore you have more pores oxygenating the wine. That is great for the big, stronger wine, like Cabernet, Syrah and Merlot. This is called botte. Simply ideal for more delicate, more deep, more elegant wines like Nebbiolo, Corvina or Sangiovese. All is left to do is to be bottled. If the wine is aging oak, then it will be transferred again in a stainless steel tank for natural decanting and after that 
the wine will be bottled. So now, what is left to do, once the wine is bottled, is to open the bottle and enjoy the final product. It's been a long journey and a very delicate process, but worth the wait and worth the stress. Amazing. Drink tube. This is the end of our journey. This is the end of how wine is made. But this was all about still wine. If you want to know how sparkling wine is made, if you want to know how Prosecco is made, just click here. But remember, whatever you do, whatever you like, whatever you want to know about any drinks, subscribe to Drinks Tube. Ching ching.